ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the analysis of Yoleno TV. I hope you well from wherever you're watching this channel. Now, I want us to delve on this story of Jafet Kome. And Jafet Kome is the latest casualty of ongoing changes in government. Now, we all know that the process of removing an a inspector general is through a recommendation from the president so that a tribunal is set up and that tribunal looks into the conduct of the inspector general and upon recommendation from the tribunal the recommendation will be either to retain or fire this the the inspector general that report is submitted to the president who will look at the report and make a final decision based on the re report's recommendation now I've seen so many people say that uh, there could have been some push and pull in state house telling the inspector general that the country can avoid the whole process of doing all this tribunal just to have you fired, just fire yourself. Probably that's why the inspector general had to resign. But you see, earlier on, there was a statement that was released by the ODM wing. And uh, it, that statement was led by, was actually delivered by Edwin Sifun. The decision to fire his cabinet was a good start in our view, but the feeling across the country is that there still exists an atmosphere of fear that makes it impossible for people to speak freely. Ruto must fire the Inspector General of Police, the Nairobi Police Commander, and apprehend all police officers implicated in the murders of the over 200 innocent Kenyans in peace. So I want us to go into the nitty-gritties of these events that led to Inspector General resigning. But before you do that, please like this video. It's so important if you like this video. And I'm so grateful for everyone who has been liking our videos. Mind you, I don't take that for granted. Subscribe to our channel if you've not subscribed before. And to existing subscribers, thank you so much for your support. Now, the Inspector General, of course, received a lot of pressure from the Kenyans, you know, more, most people blaming him about so many things, deaths especially. You know, the first time Inspector General was asked to resign was last year, 2022, during the demonstrations of uh, Azimio and Kanyalans. And you remember the story about those body, body dead, the dead bodies who were, according to Inspector General Jafet Kome, those bodies were hired. And the information I have is they go to some of the mortuaries, compromise the workers are there. People even who died of uh, some illness, people who died maybe out of a, an accident or other causes, they take photographs of such bodies and blame on police. That Azimio had dead bodies. So the former Inspector General now, who is Jafet Kome, made such statements and there was a recommendation that his name be taken to ICC, and of which Azimio did that. They actually did introduce... They started that process, and then we saw Karim Khan, the ICC prosecutor, come to Kenya. Then there was word that he was trying to collect some evidences, and then the pressure from IG Kome cooled down Kidogo. So, there is a similar call to have this matter forwarded to ICC, matter of the former Inspector General, talking about Jafet Kome, that he is solely responsible for the mess that took place. That the abduction, the deaths, and everything, the clobbering, the claim, the, the maimings, that is the one who ordered, who made orders of that magnitude. I don't know about that because, of course, Ruto has vindicated himself from that mess and said that the police department is totally independent, that he doesn't run the police, he doesn't issue orders, that if at all there's any mess, that the police department is the part, department to be blamed. Probably that explains why Jafet Kome resigned. But you see, I was telling you about a statement which the ODM wing issued. One thing I suspect could have taken place, maybe there could have been some push from even Raila Molodinga. Because Raila indicated that he is ready to for a broad, a broad engagement. You know, that's what William Ruto refers to, a broad engagement whereby there are stakeholders who are involved. So one of the conditions uh, for Raila Molodinga to participate could have been have Jafet Kome fired and also have the old cabinet dissolved. 
that could have been one of the first recommendations from Raila Moroding. I highly suspect that was the case. Now, the second thing would have been for the youths to probably, for, for, for William Ruto to bring the youths on board, the, the first thing was to have Jafet Kome fired, you know. So those were some of the, 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 the conditions. Because even if you remember the moment William Ruto fired his CSS, there was a list that surfaced. And the list was from the Gen Z saying that the first item has been dealt with. That was the uh, dissolving the cabinet. But then far end, there was also, there was this issue of uh, Jafet Kome that that is still pending. Of course, we've also seen people talk about Mustala Mudavadi, that Mustala Mudavadi ought to have gone with that cabinet because he's also an appointee and not elected. They you still have recommendations. They still have more to be done. But the good thing is that things are happening. And the remarks that we've seen online, remarks from the mainstream media, it is believed that at least the government is doing something that can now resonate with people. The cabinet, Ilifutwa, Jafet Kome, I may resign, but there is still more. They, was, they are saying that they still need corruption to be dealt with, that those CSAs are more Futwa. Wandamwe tu kama unasaya laki, unasaya laki tisa, uweleze vizuri. Kama unamshipi walipa msini, uweleze vizuri. Kama ukiingia ulikuwa na milioni miyamoja, sasa ukona bilioni, uweleze vizuri. So those are some of the things which uh, youths are still agitating over. So the resignation of Jafet Kome has been well received. Well received by many Kenyans. Now, I also need to tell you something I was almost forgetting. This story of uh, the body bags. You saw uh, that those, those body bags, those uh, dead bodies which were wrapped up in uh, sacks. I think I understand there were like six, six of them. Even though, even though the, the first story I had was about nine, but the numbers which have been confirmed is around six. And uh, it's also alleged that these are all female. They are all female. So Mutanguni reacted to something here regarding the same. Let me just take you through that tweet. It's still in line with security. Now, Mutanguni says, do you remember the Nigerian who killed a 20-year-old girl in Kasarani? Hacked her into pieces and wrapped her in sacks. No head. Bodies recovered today were all women. Fact. Their private parts mutilated. Their organs missing. Cut into pieces. Packed in sacks. Why blame Ruto? Well, what Mutanguni is trying to tell us is that that is not uh, Ruto related. Of course, there's also Bianca here who says, Lakini, you people should stop spreading with disinformation and misinformation to fuel hate against President William Ruto's government. Be factual and share uh, verifiable news. You need to ask yourself questions. All bodies found have decomposed and are unidentified. All are women. So, could it be that this is one of the things which compelled uh, Jafet Kome to resign? Because the moment this information surfaced, that is the time we saw news about Jafet Kome resigning. Was it that the pressure was going to be too much for him? Either way, the youth of Kenya wanted Jafet Kome to go. And of course, that's what he did. Alienda. So probably going forward, we are to see what is going to happen. But there are more demands from the Gen Z's. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to raise my question. What do you think about this resignation? What do you think could have caused Jafet Gomez's resignation? Is it the Gen Z's demands? Or is it that these bodies which were found? Is it William Ruto who convinced him to resign? Or what is the case? Perhaps if you're watching this video and have not subscribed, take one second and subscribe. Like this video. Until you catch up again, stay safe. And stay blessed.